chicken. It's the raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Made imperfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the raggy dolls and say I just don't care. Cause raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Are happy just to be. Raggy dolls. The Raggy Dolls were up in the treehouse playing a game that Dotty had invented. It was like I Spy, but different. It was to do with sounds. Everyone took turns to imagine something they could hear, while the others had to guess what it was by making the right noise. It was Satsack's turn to think of something. I hear with my little ear something beginning with D. Ruff, ruff! barked Princess. Sadsack shook his head. Hee-haw, hee-haw, brayed Claude. Sadsack shook his head again. Back to front grinned and said, Ah! Uh... What on earth is that supposed to be? demanded Dotty. Uh, a doctor, giggled back to front. They're always telling people to say, Ah! Uh... Everyone laughed. I know, said Lucy. Quack, quack, quack! But Sadsack shook his head once more. Well, hi, give up, said Princess. If it's not her dog, her donkey, or a duck, what is it? But just as he opened his mouth to tell them the answer, they all heard a strange sound. The raggy dolls looked. No one was more surprised than Sadsack. I didn't make that noise, he protested. Of course not, said Dotty. But who did? There it goes again, said Back to Front. It sounds like a steam engine. And it's coming from over the, 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 there, stammered High Five, pointing in the direction of Stony Broke Hall. Come on, chaps, said Dotty. Let's investigate. As fast as they could, the Raggy Dolls made their way to Stony Broke Hall, squeezed through the iron gates, and hid in some shrubs. They could hear the animals in the nearby safari park. Now let's spread out, whispered Dotty. But be careful. We don't want to bump into any lions. No problem, said Back to Front. All the animals are behind a big fence. They can't get out. We'll be all right so long as we stay in the gardens. The raggy dolls nodded. One by one, they began exploring. Creeping carefully amongst the flowers and bushes of the magnificent garden surrounding Stony Broke Hall. Over here! called back to front softly. The others joined him. He was standing by a narrow railway track. Take cover! ordered Dotty. The raggy dolls hid and watched as a magnificent model steam engine puffed past them. The only passenger was Lord Stonybroke himself wearing a railwayman's hat and holding a green flag. He was grinning from ear to ear and thoroughly enjoying himself. Wow, said Back to Front after the train had gone. Did you see that? Dotty nodded. They must be testing it, she said. Mais oui, said Claude. Let us help them. We can be the first passengers, n'est-ce pas? Everyone heartily agreed. I haven't had so much fun in years, he declared to the driver. And it's such a splendid way to see the gardens. I'm sure it's going to be very popular, especially with the youngsters and, of course, the older visitors who don't like to walk too far. <laughs> splendid, splendid. There's plenty of steam up your lordship, said the driver. Do you want to go round again? Oh, I, I, I'd love to, but I've got other things to attend to, sad to say. No, you take her round a few times. <laughs> Better use up the steam rather than waste it, eh, what? <laughs> Lord Stonybroke winked and the driver grinned. They were like two little boys with a new toy. We're in luck, whispered Dotty. Quick, let's climb aboard while they're not looking. The raggy doll slipped into a carriage while Lord Stonybroke waved his green flag and blew a whistle. The driver answered with the train whistle and... The train was soon speeding along through the gardens. The driver took care to slow down on the bends. 
Although small, the engine was quite powerful because it was designed to pull lots of people. It was great fun. <gasps> oh, I wish I could have a go at driving, sighed back to front. Suddenly, there was a screech of brakes and the train shuddered to a halt. What's wrong? said Lucy in alarm. I don't know, said Dotty. Let's take a look. Keeping their heads low, the ragged dolls peered over the empty carriages. Up ahead, Lord Stonybroke stood talking to the driver. He seemed quite agitated. He was holding a net and a bag of fruit. What's he saying? said Back to Front. Shh, said Dotty. Listen. One of the monkeys. Just, just a young one. Don't know. If you see him, right. Good luck. The ragged dolls watched as the driver got off the train and went searching through the gardens with the net and the fruit. Hmm, said Dotty. I could be wrong, but I think one of the monkeys has got out. Dotty was right. A monkey suddenly jumped up onto the driver's seat. Eh, look! squealed Lucy. The monkey was startled. He swung on a lever, knocked the brake, and scampered off. And the train was on the move again, without a driver. Oh, no, moaned Satsak. The runaway train gathered speed and began hurtling round the track. Help, wailed Lucy. Somebody do something. The ragged dolls held on tight, all except for back to front. He was already climbing over the carriages towards the engine. The train rushed into a bend and nearly hit the driver who'd come back to see what was going on. The driver gave a yell and jumped clear throwing the net and the bag of fruit up in the air. At last, back to front reached the engine and grabbed the controls. He soon brought the train gently to a halt. It stood there, hissing and gulping, and seemed to be just as relieved as the raggy dolls. <laughs> well, 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 look at you, laughed back to front when he saw the others. They were in a heap on their carriage floor, surrounded by fruit and covered with the net. Just then, they heard voices. There he goes! Quick! Close in! It was Lord Stonybroke and the men. Quick! said Dotty. Get us out! Back to front lifted one side of the net, and just as the last of the ragged dolls scrambled out, from out of nowhere, the monkey accidentally rushed in. Back to front dropped the net, and the monkey was trapped. <laughs> no problem, he laughed. I think it's time we were going, said Dotty. Come on! After the factory closed, the Raggy Dolls sat down to tea and cakes in the canteen. I wonder what Lord Stonybroke thought when he found the monkey, said Lucy, tucking into a bun. I imagine he was very surprised and relieved, said Dotty. It was all very exciting, said Princess, but I think I prefer nice, safe games up in the treehouse. Oh, yeah, said Back to Front. Sadsack never did tell us the answer. What was it? Something beginning with D? Sadsack nodded and pointed to a doughnut. A doughnut? protested Dotty. You can't have that. It doesn't make a noise. Oh, yes, it does, said Sadsack, picking it up. Listen. He took a big bite of the doughnut. Mmm, -hmm, he said. Everyone laughed except Dotty. But you made that noise, not the doughnut. Sadsack shrugged. I'm not very good at games, he said, taking another big sugary bite. That was a relief. I thought for a minute we weren't going to get the Raggy Doll song. And it's a very good song, isn't it? It's sung by a man who once had a number one hit, I think, a little while ago. Now, I'm going to be glued to the television on Saturday morning because the guest on Motormouth is that fabulous young actor who was in Home Alone. Have you seen that film? Love it. But what's next?
Hello, Hitta here. I'm on with Victor next on Children's ITV.